Ladies and gentlemen, we have got one hell of a vlog for you today. This one is an absolute doozy. Loading up the Wrecker 5 ton can only mean one thing. We got a fantastic recovery to work on. You see our boy Hunter, you guys know Hunter, right? Well, he just called and apparently he's stuck. And when I say stuck, he is really stuck. He took his bus out to the Bonneville Salt Flats to do some camping or I don't know what he was actually doing. And it sunk. And if you know anything about the Salt Flats or the Great Salt Lake, you guys have seen like my excavator and where it got stuck. Like when stuff gets stuck out there, it gets really stuck. So the bus is a giant school bus and it weighs probably 25, 30,000 pounds. So this is not going to be an easy task. I think he's way off the road too. So I don't think there's anywhere to winch from. I'm pretty sure he's like a mile off the freeway, which we don't have a mile of cable on the, on the truck. It's fine. We're going to go out. We're going to save him. We're going to recover his bus from the grips of the Great Salt Lake. What we're going to use is the five ton wrecker. Obviously it's got multiple winches on it. And then, oh man, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Freedom bus. The Freedom Bus is gonna go save the day. You guys know that the bus we used in the tug of war video. Freedom! So we actually built that bus specifically to be able to travel across soft terrain like the Great Salt Lake when we were accessing the island a couple years ago. So it's been sitting for a while, um, hasn't really gone on any missions. I don't think we've ever used it for recovery missions. So we're gonna load it up on the uh, Kenworth and the Low Boy, which it's gonna be a very oversized load, we'll have to pull an oversized permit. But uh, we're gonna load that up and we're gonna head out to Monteville Salt Flats and see just how bad Hunter's really stuck. But buckle up, because this is gonna be a fun one. Guys, it's a big day today. We're going out to the desert to save Hunter. And guess what we're pulling out of retirement? The one, the only, Freedom Bus! Freedom Steel Region, we're coming to save you, Hunter! Let's go! Ethan. actual hell is going on here? It looks like you're loading a massive bus in front of some houses. Move it or lose it. Fun fact about this bus is before it got turned into the monster bus, I took this bus down to southern Utah and filmed a mountain bike video with it where we jumped off the top of this bus. <laughs> This, this bus and I go way back, actually. I kind of like it. We're not sure if this is legal or not, right? You ask that question every single time you see us. This boat legal. Like, I mean, I know you... <laughs> Why would you ask that question? I'm just... It's a Let's, very we're, we're, question. Here, we're here to review the boat, not the, <laughs> not the legal status. Because, I mean, it's a genuine question. Our width and height. Just grab that measuring tape we had earlier. I got you. like 35,000 pounds. I was just shy at 40 actually. It's not light. All right guys, hey, we're gonna take a quick break from this vlog because I wanna to talk to you about something. A lot of you have asked me to show more of like my home life and my personal life. And I plan on doing that. And I have a hard time transitioning from work mode to home mode. I get burnt out. So I have to find like a good balance. But I found something that helps me a lot. It helps me make that transition to be able to like unwind at the end of the day like jumping online and Wikipedia and all these different sites and just digging in and like gathering as much knowledge and information as I can, which is why I'm super excited to tell you about Skillshare again. You guys already know, I've talked about them before. They've sponsored videos, they've sponsored this one. Um, but I keep talking about them because it's actually, it works for me. Um, so right now I'm watching this class on, it's a master class on real productivity, how to build habits that last. Um, it's by this entrepreneur named Thomas Frank. And basically what he did is put together like this hour long masterclass 
with all these little hacks that, he, that you can implement in your daily life to like use your time better and have a more productive day and like just get more out of uh, the hours in the workday, which is a big deal for me because I'm constantly trying to optimize and like like do better and accomplish more. And that's why this is perfect. So Skillshare is this website. It's like this online community full of tons of different classes and teachers and people just like you and I that are there to learn. They literally have classes from like uh, photography, uh, graphic design, animation, um, marketing, entrepreneurship, personal development, basically anything that you want to learn is probably on here. Thousands of videos and thousands of people on here learning together. What I love about it is for curious people and for like lifelong learners like me, uh, there's no ad. Being on here, you're going to learn to be able to do something tomorrow that you couldn't do today. Here's the deal guys, Skillshare, since they're a partner of the channel, they wanna give you guys a free trial membership. So the first thousand people to click the link in my description below, you're gonna get a free trial membership. So that means basically you're gonna be able to claim a free login ID, go there and use it and see if you like it. I know that I, like for me, I look forward to this every day when I come home from work and I just wanna unwind and I can spend anywhere between 10 minutes and an hour just like absorbing all this information. And then I feel productive. I feel like I use my time wisely, close my laptop, and then I unwind, go to bed, and I wake up smarter. It's pretty awesome, and it's a good deal. So guys, check it out. I love it. I'm gonna keep using it, and I think you should give it a shot too. All right, we're all loaded up. We're ready to go find Hunter. Now you guys know that I love a good recovery mission. Like I, I'll jump at any chance to do this kind of stuff, but man, did he choose a freaking hot day get stuck like there's storm clouds which is nice it'll come down a little bit but dude i am completely drenched a couple quick facts for you this bus we built to be able to cross the dry lake bed here in the great salt lake dry lake bed is is kind of a confusing term because there's a lot of soft spots in it so this bus has monster jet truck tires it's got bkt 66 inch uh, floater tires however the bus is still pretty heavy so um the reason we're taking this is because this might be the only vehicle that can actually reach him. Because if he's sunk, that means he's in an area that's super soft. So hopefully uh, the bus does what it's supposed to do. We've already seen the bus pulls really well because we did the tug of war video and it beat every vehicle that we have, like easily. Uh, it's got a ton of power, ton of weight. So as long as we can keep it from sinking, we're gonna be good to go. We're also bringing the uh, Wrecker five ton with the winches and a bunch of winch cables, just in case we need to be able to reach from a dry spot. I'm pretty sure he's well off the beaten path, so it's not like we can pull him from the road. We're gonna have to get out on the lake bed and risk getting stuck ourselves in order to be able to rescue him. So um, it's about a probably about an hour, hour and 15 minute drive out to the salt flats. Uh, we got the Kenworth all loaded down. Bus is strapped down with pretty much every chain and binder that we have. So uh, now it's just a matter of getting out there. Diesel Dave just got a call. Um, he had a little pop up, so. He's not gonna be able to join us, so we're on our own. We got a whole crew of guys here, so should be good. And hopefully this wind keeps on uh, bringing some of this cool air in. But I got a new co-pilot today, which is Mr. Ethan. What do you think, buddy? This is incredible. This is your like, first recovery this mission. Is, this is like most people's worst nightmare, <laughs> is to like do a heavy machine recovery. Yeah. It's like, you're, you're so comfortable. It's like picking your kid up from, from like soccer practice. Like that's how comfortable it is. It's incredible. It's even, it's even more enjoyable to pick my kid up from soccer practice actually, believe it or not. Yeah. This is like my element. You're like, you like get the call like, hey, we're stuck out here. You're like, yes, it's like Christmas morning. It's most people dread crazy. those phone calls. I love them. So we gotta jump in the other truck. It was like a just a middle of the road trip, nothing crazy. Normally we're like two, three hundred bucks. This is only like eighty. We pretty much bought everything they had. So I made that corn dog blow. I feel like you scored in that. It's little... like golden, crispy, crunchy on the outside, and like doughy in the middle. Who knew that? Awesome. We've just been getting a lot of. Oh no, this one's fifteen nine. Limit. That was right there. Huh? I think we're like. 
like 15.5. All right, guys, so as you can see, the weather out here today as we try to recover Hunter's bus is absolute trash. Um, it's crazy, there's huge storms rolling in, so that means there's a lot of wind. And when there's a lot of wind, that means the audio on any of these videos is absolute garbage. And if you know anything about me, you know that I'm a lighting snob and I'm a sound snob. Like, I can't watch a video where the lighting's terrible and I can't watch a video with terrible audio. I mean, I will, but if there's a way around it, I always try to find a way around it. That's why I'm gonna narrate this a little bit for you and explain to you what's going on because this is uh, <laughs> this is wild. This is funny what happened out here. Um, so we obviously built this giant school bus, the monster bus, uh, on an episode of Diesel Brothers, right? And I built it for a client. Um, that client ended up becoming a partner of mine shortly after we built the bus for him um, because we built it to be able to access the island uh, out in the Great Salt Lake that I was an owner of. Well, we used the bus, it did what it needed to do, and then we ended up selling the island, and so they didn't need a giant bus, so I was like, I'll buy it back. So I actually got it back, um, and I've been super pumped on it. And as you guys have seen, we used it a little here and there. Um, we used it in the tug of war video uh, out here in the back lot, and it absolutely punished every other vehicle that we had to tug of war against. I'm pretty sure it actually beat two vehicles tied together. I can't remember exactly what the details were, but it's big, it's heavy, and it's powerful. Uh, it's like a 1999 uh, Bluebird rear engine uh, school bus. Um, it's got a Cummins 5.9 engine. It's all the parts on this bus are pretty much monster truck parts. Uh, the tires are 66 inch BKT tires, which are the exact same tires that we run in Monster Jam. Um, it's got the big um, beadlock wheels that we run in Monster Jam. It's got lockers front and rear on those axle tech axles. The axles are a little bit lighter than our monster truck axles because we're not doing any jumping of this bus. I mean, yet, I'm sure probably at some point, maybe that'll happen. We don't get to use this bus as much as I would hope. So when Hunter mentioned kind of where he was and what was happening, I was like, I'm in. And this is the perfect opportunity to use the bus. Made it. Found one glove. One glove? It's better than no glove. Normally you find a left glove because most people are right-handed and only favor the right hand. Well, this time I got the right glove. So today I'm winning. This is crazy. I mean, I've been out here a few times, but never like this. Kind of exciting. All right, so we're here unloading the bus. Uh, I think we saw Hunter on the way in way out there. He's like a couple miles off the uh, road here and looks like he's pretty buried. The problem with the salt flats is this side over here is the Bonneville Speedway, which is like pristine, beautiful, hard packed. Um, east of here, it gets soggier and soggier as you get closer and closer to the Great Salt Lake. And it looks like he is in a pretty soggy spot. So the plan right now is we're gonna unload the bus um, with all the ropes and cables and stuff and go try recovering him with just the bus. If we have troubles there with the bus or there's any issues, then we're gonna have to grab the five ton and unload it. But for now, we're gonna leave the five ton on the trailer and see if we can do it just with the bus. Let's see what happens. All right, so we got this, the bus on the salt. Um, we're officially on the lake bed. This place is packed. There, as you can see, are people literally everywhere. And uh, this is kind of the moment of truth. I have not had this, tr this bus out in a long, long time. So hopefully, we went over it before we left uh, mechanically to make sure it was good, but you never know. Uh, there's always that weird stuff that pops up the custom vehicles. But one thing about riding in this bus that videos and pictures don't do justice is it's literally like riding around on a cloud. It is so cushioned here, right? It's so, like just going over those like eight inch curbs. Yeah. I didn't even feel them. Like we're riding on pillows with the nitro shop that we got it. It's insane. It's like riding around in your living room. I tell everybody that's the best way to describe riding in this bus. It's like taking your living room off road. So uh, we're headed, I think kind of about that way. He's a couple miles over there and uh, it's really, really, really windy. So I apologize in advance. The audio is going to probably suck. So most of the talking that we're gonna do is either gonna be voiceover or here inside the bus to block us from the wind. No yelling on the bus! The best part is people are so confused. <laughs> you got like a car sitting there taking pictures, like people just don't even know what to think I'm right pretty now. sure there's like a church choir going on. Over there is like a wedding or something and we're obviously definitely gonna go do some circles around it. <laughs>
right there. This is the part where I gotta be a little bit careful because if he's stuck, that means the ground is soft around him. Granted, I got a lot more flotation than he does, but this is just where we kind of like inch in and kind of feel it out before just like driving straight up to it. So I would love to not get the bus stuck. It would take a lot to get stuck, but. And they are very. They are definitely. They've definitely gotta be sitting on axles. 100%. They got a jump and everything made. They've been here for a while. Now you can see a lot of moisture in the ground here. Um, it's definitely a softer part of the uh, of the, of the uh, lake bed over here. So I can see why they got stuck. And that bus with those uh, you know stock tires and stuff has got a lot of ground pressure. SCS transfer case. It's got those straight cut gears in there, so she is loud, like very loud. We head over towards him, and as we start to get close, I see his bus just sitting there on the axles, like literally sitting on the body. It is buried. And he was in one of those spots where it looks dry. In fact, the lake bed looks like the rest of the lake bed, but all of a sudden it just starts to get a little bit soft. So as we pull up, I'm obviously curious to talk to him, figure out what happened, because I don't know the full story yet. I just know that they were out here goofing around. But this is where things get really interesting. Um, <laughs> Hunter apparently was ghost riding the bus, meaning he jumped out of the driver's seat, went out to the door and was like waving at the camera and was trying to do something goofy, fell off, tumbled, like beat himself up and the bus kept driving. And then the bus just continued to drive until the point where it just sunk in the soft mud with nobody in it, which makes this whole thing like, so perfect like I, the fact that that's how he got stuck i'm not even mad it's actually i'm not even mad that's amazing <laughs> like i'm pumped to be out here um i'm pumped to see what the freedom bus can do the fact that he fell off while he was ghost riding like it's just it's it's too perfect we pull up to the bus and um we back up to it because the original plan is to maybe just pull hunter's bus back out the way that it came because obviously if we keep going forward it's going to keep getting softer <laughs> So I just have a high idle pulled out right now. See it? Okay. Let's, we can try a couple different shots. <laughs> so we hook up to it um, and just, you know, give it the first hug. And it puts up a much bigger fight than I was expecting. It's actually given us more resistance than I was expecting. We just dug a little bit of a hole. So I'm gonna have to uh, give it a pretty good tug here. So here it goes. Something broke. The first big hit that I uh, gave it, it ripped that you know, receiver assembly basically right off the bus. I thought it broke the shackle or the income rope, which would be very difficult to do. Obviously, it didn't. That was not ideal. What do you got there, Hunter? So it just ripped the monster hook clean out of our bumper. Okay, so new plan. I'll turn this damn bus around. Apparently, our tie point there, where we tied the uh, hooks into the bumper, wasn't as strong as we thought it was, because it just literally ripped it right off. Okay. Things just got interesting. Interesting. 
just ripped that uh, tow hook right off. I thought it was the shackle that broke first, but I'm wrong. This is all wrong. Can't put it in, in reverse and go. Hey, hey, let me get it. Let me get you talking to him again. Are you ready when you are? This time I'm going to hit it just a little bit softer, um, a little less slack in the rope. So as soon as you feel it start going and you see my tire start spinning, just just give it because the problem is I'm starting to sink over here. And if I sink, then obviously we're screwed. So uh, here we go. massive trenches because uh, we're spinning a little bit not trying to but just all this weight pulling down so we have he's like halfway out but we got a few more poles uh, and I just hope the crust doesn't break because if this crust breaks we are in quicksand and then it's it's a bad time for everybody that means we're stuck that pisses me off oh, here it comes here it comes here it comes here it comes here. Gosh, he is so buried. And now he's going through our ruts and our ruts are getting big. Not ideal. There we go. The problem is we're dealing with so much just dead weight that every time I hit it hard, I mean the bus has got the power to pull it hard, but it just keeps breaking it. And we broke the other hook. And good, great, grand, wonderful. Oh no. Fresh out of hook points on Hunter's bus. So now our option is basically go to the axle. Axle or frame somehow. That's always scary though. It's a risk. That is a risk. You go to frame, you pull real stuff off. <laughs> problem is this front end is just dead weight dragging through the mud so now we're going to go try pulling it forward this is where things get really they can get really really quick because every time we move we're softening up the ground because we're pushing water to the surface yeah you can hear them talking out there they're saying every time we back up the ground it's just so uh we've only got a few more tries before we are dealing with a giant mud hole here so we're gonna go around the front one of the issues is his motor's in the front too. Yeah, he's got a lot more weight up there. So that front end has the two wheels and it's just sinking.
picked up his bus. He has no more throttle. Not ideal. And, uh, got a bird's nest in there that we weren't aware of so that was like full throttle full power full everything and uh, had to hold it wide open to keep him from breaking through that crust again that's not bad for a bus that's just been sitting in front of our building for the last three years the only time it's driven was when we did that tug of war other than that it just kind of sits there as a display vehicle so I'm not mad at all it did pretty well but now it reminded me that there's a bunch of stuff we need to tune up on it to keep it ready for stuff like this. So uh, we'll get back to the shop and figure out what exactly we're gonna do. Well, we did it. Uh, that was one of those deals where we rolled up on it and thought it was gonna be way easier than it really was, because it didn't look like it was that stuck, but you forget how heavy that thing is. So it took, uh, obviously, a little bit of finagling back and forth. Ultimately, what I think did it is we hooked uh, closer the buses together so that the tall bus was able to pull up on the front end and kind of lift it out of that muck, but it still did not want to come out. We had to pull them a solid quarter mile before that bus uh, finally broke up on top of the crust here. So now we're in a safe place. Now we just gotta be able to get both bucks, <laughs> we gotta get both buses back to the truck and, uh, and uh, load it up. And uh, this bus needs to cool down a little bit because a bird decided to build a nest between the two radiators. So we're gonna let it cool down and uh, load up. So hopefully Hunter doesn't get stuck again. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm so
just reminds me that I'm really glad that, you know, moments where I decide to keep one of these crazy vehicles that we've built and people question me, they're like, why are you doing that? You don't need another big vehicle. Well, yes I do. Because even though the monster bus is not gonna go on every recovery for it, you know, with us and, and go do every, you know, job, there are jobs that only it can do. And I'm pretty sure this was definitely one of those jobs. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you don't mind me sitting here explaining to you what was going on because like I said, the audio was so bad out there that we couldn't even hear ourselves talk. So let alone be able to talk to a microphone on a camera. Um, and finally, I just wanna remind you to subscribe because we're almost to a million subscribers. When we get there, we're doing another drawing for one of my Polaris vehicles. And one of you, anybody who's subscribed to the channel, you all get opportunities to win. And it's not just one time. Every time we hit 250,000 new subscribers, bam, every single one of you that's already a subscriber or new subscribers or whatever, we're putting your name in the hat again. So it's, uh, you get a lot of chances at winning and we've had a lot of winners that are super pumped. So stay subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button and join the party because guys, we're just getting started. Hope you enjoy.